pass the mic down and introduce yourselves to us, please, and tell us your film, please. Hi, I'm Nikki. I'm Cody. Pratik. And uh, we're the creators of Bush with Jody. Thank you. Uh, Westerns are really cool because they uh, are not about the West. <laughs> They're really just about who we are and our, our zeitgeist at the time. So it's, uh, it was a pleasure to reimagine a Western to more reflect our community um, in a pretty exclusionary canon and try to be a more inclusive reimagining of what a Western could be. <laughs> My name is Joe Zacco. I did Subway Stops. Uh, yeah. I'm Marty's Hill. I was the producer on the vacation. Hi, I'm Sam today. I was the cinematographer and editor for Ricky. Yeah. Hi, I'm Matthew Sennebaum. I'm the co-writer and director of The Hardest Button to Button. Hello, I'm Oprah Gary, the producer of Fire and Pate. Uh, I'm Nick Ravitch, I'm the producer of Rose Salon's Lost and Found. Yeah. Okay, so I guess the first question would be is, uh, as filmmakers, what is your influence for each of your projects? And if you could talk about that with us a little bit or get into it with us. We'll start the way at the end. So um, I work for an organization called Art21. We make documentaries about um, uh, documentary portraits of contemporary artists in New York and elsewhere. And so the film we saw was part of a larger series. So Rose was someone that we had um, known about for a while. And that project at the very end of the coins uh, uh, at the Whitney was uh, kind of what kicked it off. I think this the attraction for Rose was it's such a eccentric, um, funny, but kind of a a look into New York that we all have a, some relationship to. I'm sure we've all lost something. We've all attempted to put a coin in the MTA or a bus. You guys <laughs> didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, um, yeah, uh, and also just one last thing. So everything we do is for free online. I suggest if folks are into contemporary art and your documentary, come check us out. It's art21.org. Yeah. here and Marco they're both stand-ups and they sort of married those two ideas and I guess artistically I thought a lot about Billy Wilder who makes really simple deceptive movies um, and I wanted to kind of look like a Truffaut movie like a French New Wave shot in a backyard in Queens so something like that. Uh, when Rashad Fret, the our writer and director approached me to make this film we really wanted to make a character study of somebody who is uh, had to go to prison at a very very early age and was let out in to adults who had not fully prepared and into a system that was likely to um, corner him and put him back in the situation that he grew out of. And we looked at the works of Jacques Audiard and very uh, handheld documentary style. We wanted it to feel very real and gritty and um, tell the story with that level of suspense. So that's probably what you saw in some of the camera work and editing that we strive for. Mm, yeah. The Vacation was born out of a feature film that the other producer, Julius, and I have been developing with Jero Carrillo, the writer, director, actor, and editor on the project. Um, and it's a feature that is about a young man who is forced to grow up when his mother suddenly dies as they're getting evicted from their housing project in Chicago. So we took the project to the NYU Production Lab and they have been helping us develop the feature and they took it out to some industry partners and they said, hey, you know, we think the team is great, but we haven't seen anything recently from Jero as a writer, director, actor. Uh, and we know for first time features that may be a big ask to get somebody to get on board. So if you guys could work with them to make 
a short that shows off his abilities to do all of that, we think that could be a strong addition to the package. So then Giroux came up with this idea to create this contained story with the four main characters of the feature, uh, who we see in the short, Devin, Aaron, Trey, and Freddie, uh, set in one day and very contained so that he would have enough time to work with the actors as well as mine his performance. Uh, and that's how we got to the vacation. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the basic influence for my film was, you know, just the subways themselves, just the flickering movement of it all, the noise and chaos, the characters that populate it. As far as cinematic influences, it's hard to give a, a short answer because each sequence is kind of like a different attempt at a, a different sort of pure cinema, and so like, each sequence is kind of different in that regard, like, the whole sequence of like a can rolling up and down a train is kind of like my attempt to do like one of these films, Chantal Ackerman and Bab Babbitt Mangold do early in New York, like uh, Hotel Monterey. The middle of the film, all of the tracking shots is much more like uh, uh, Mikhail Kalatazov, like his film Soy Cuba and those wide angle moving shots. But right. each sequence is kind of a different idea. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Nikki already gave us a little bit on what, what we do, but at the Goondocks, we, we like to take uh, different genres and put them in a more modern, interesting way um so i have one also about it's a war film with squirt guns or it's not another it's just a goondocks.tv check it out <laughs> all right and we have time for a question from our audience so does anyone have any questions for our filmmakers anybody oh right there in the back I wanted to know uh about ricky what did the 25 speed limit mean like, it kept showing up. Oh, okay. Um, we went out for an extra day to shoot a bunch of B-roll because we actually uh, realized that it would be nice to put uh, Ricky in to see kind of like his POV. I think we, in the edit, we put that there to um, maybe add to the tension that, you know, he's reading every single sign because he's not used to driving and he's trying to look at every signal on the street and he's okay. being distracted by everything. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we were going for there. That was a nice touch. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, all the way in the back there. Um, I actually lost a ring on the subway, so I was curious if anybody ever um, claimed any of the rings that were found in that project. Good question. I think, uh, so there's a whole, uh... what I understand from roses is a whole office where these things are collected. And so, and there's a kind of community of sort of like, uh, what's the show, the reality show, the, um, pawn shop or the storage war shop and so there's kind of a community of folks who are basically you kind of combine bid on some of the stuff i think they do return it i, I think you probably know in the mta you'd have to go way 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 out of your way <laughs> to get it back but I, I think that is the amazing thing that the mta is kind of taking you know people return it in and the mta has a, the wherewithal to to put it somewhere but I, yeah i don't know specifically about that all right, that is all the time we have. Thank you so much. And give another round of a huge round of applause.